So I pretty definitively stated that the gatherer's hut is the first building you want to build. And uh, I may be less opinionated about what is the second thing that you should build after this initial structure. Uh, because, you know, the basic needs are, are met. And I would say the, the next most important need is probably uh, for clothing that we don't have. Therefore, we are, we are going to want to use the hunting cabin, most likely. And that's going to give us uh, an extra supply of food, which is good. And it's going to give us uh, hide. It's So when we kill our deer and skin them up, we're going to have hides that we can use to make clothing out of. We're going to need another building to make that clothing, but that will be useless unless we've we've built up some hides to use. So, so one thing you may need to do is unassign your woodcutter for a while, just so you have enough logs naturally produced from your forester lodge to build your hunting cabin. So you may notice we also have another issue, which is that our storage for produced goods is near capacity. And what it's talking about there is the storage cart, which we're totally filling up with food. So. Uh, maybe our next construction project is a storage barn. We can just stick that there. Boom. No problem. Uh, storage barn is going to increase our capacity uh, and we're going to want to place it somewhere where the people who produce our uh, goods, such as our hunter and our gatherer, can place them easily, just walking along this road, and the people who live in the houses can very easily go to the barn, gather some stuff, bring it home. Uh, if we, you know, stick it off in a corner somewhere, that's gonna be less efficient. We have our hunter here. We're gonna, I guess, put two hunters in. Um, and I think at this point, you just wanna kinda evenly spread people. Oh, we still need a couple of builders because we uh, wanna build this storage barn. So back to the housing, um, you might think to yourself at this point, well, why don't I just make more houses and get things going? You could. At this point, um, you might start to get some efficiency out of doing that just because we have our Cather Ford, our forester here, and Harlanet, our builder, who are still very young, but they could very easily move out and uh, cartel the hunter, who is 11. They could move out, and if they did, then we could start producing more children. Uh, but I think it might be wise, rather than doing that, just relying on food we can put in a storage cart, we uh, we start building up a little bit more food, and we feel confident that we can we can bring the population number up safely. We'll just wait a little bit longer to do that. Um, but you know, if you're feeling uh, like you 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 don't want to wait, that's probably it'd probably work. It'd probably be okay. Um, let, let's go ahead and do it. Let's just stick another house over here. And you might think about, you know, do you want wooden houses? Do you want stone houses? Uh, the added warmth is not so helpful right now just because they don't need to go very far. It's not a big deal in the winter. So yeah, stick with the wooden houses at first. Uh, the stone houses, they require iron. They require a lot of stone. Um, way more stone. And you don't want them to have to go super far to get it so not not generally helpful in the very early game but more helpful when you you have big surpluses of stone lying around ah so already we have uh, a decent amount of venison and leather coming in uh, we got a little bit more over here and we are completing our fifth house and we've got our young people moving in and hopefully producing us some more happy, productive citizens very quickly. One of the best things about the game is just how nice it looks, and I, the soundtrack's not bad either. Ah, so we've just had our first person who has no tool. Um, it's wood, the woodcutter again. Um, luckily, we don't need to worry too much about that. We've got enough wood coming out. Uh, not, a, not a problem, but it would be nice to solve that, uh, you know, sooner rather than later. We'll just build a blacksmith at some point. Um, just wood and iron is all you need. Uh, and we can kind of just build that in town. We can start building up more of a town center here. At a similar time, we will also start really running out of coats. We got one left. Uh, and we've built up 
a supply of leather so we can build a tailor. We're gonna need some more resources in order to do that. Uh, we'll just send people out a little bit farther to go find them. Great, now we have our tailor and our blacksmith working and a new house uh, so that our population can continue to grow. Uh, we're still doing fine. We've basically filled up our storage barn and our storage cart is still pretty full so we're going to need to build even more storage to keep up with the food production just from our, our two food producing buildings. We've uh, been able to supply enough tools now to, to satisfy the need. Um, and uh, pretty soon people are going to need some new clothing and that'll be ready for them. Uh, we already have plenty. We got 20, 22, 24, 26. They're, they're coming out real fast just because we have so much leather that we, we built up by uh, choosing that hunting cabin second. Uh, so I think in general that's, that's the main benefit of, of making that choice uh, so early. Pushing out a bit gathering more iron, gathering more stone and it's uh, starting to become scarce here so we may need to pretty soon think about building a bridge. So we can still come and get this, which is probably the right thing to do next. But we want to make sure we store up some so that we have enough to build a bridge so that we can, uh, we can conquer new lands. Your tailor will probably make up enough clothing so quickly that you can take him off and, and put him at some other job. He doesn't need to be full time. Okay, so now we're a little bit further along. I want to show you a few things. Uh, one is that I've got a schoolhouse now, which uh, you want to do when you have about a dozen children. Uh, otherwise, you you only end up with one or two students, which is not so great. Uh, I've got more Forester Lodges. I have one up to the south, up to the south. Uh, I've added bridges here and here, and I have another Forester Lodge here with a hunting cabin and a gatherer's hut. Uh, that is all sort of uh, spread around my little burgeoning town. That's just so citizens don't have to walk too far to get from where they live to where they work. And then I'll, I've also added some storage barns. So you're going to want storage barns and or stockpiles basically as close as you can get them to those work areas, uh, sort of, you know, working forests without kind of getting in the way. I'll add a bridge over to a new area, clear out some of the iron and stone, and then uh, think about whether I want to put a new, uh, a new working forest there. Uh, I added uh, some uh, cattle here, uh, and I was able to get that through the trader. So, even though I have just one woodcutter for my whole town, uh, that one woodcutter with enough logs from a few different forests is able to produce firewood for the whole town. All of the houses have their own supply of firewood, which is a lot at this point. Uh, plus I have a pretty good stockpile of firewood and I'm able to supply firewood to the trading post. So firewood is an excellent renewable uh, cell item. So by uh, stocking up my trading post here, I can add a little bit more. Whenever I have an excess of firewood, I can just bring it here. I've only got one person being a trader right now, and they just go to the stockpile, grab some firewood, bring it in. And then whenever a trader shows up, I can uh, trade it for whatever they have that seems like it's a good idea. Uh, and I, I really do recommend doing this pretty early on in the game, even though it's a, kind of an expensive building to build, and you might not think it's a great idea to start trading stuff away. Uh, you know, firewood especially is a great candidate uh, for trading stuff away, and you can start gathering the stuff that you don't have. So in the hard starting conditions, you don't have any cattle, you don't really have any seeds, uh, so you, you don't really get to start off with much, and by just kind of getting whatever floats by on the, uh, from the other traders, you can, you can start to build up the stuff you don't have. You can start to gather more seeds, you can start to gather some livestock, and they'll start to reproduce. So I, I bought four cattle and I've got a fifth one already. 
and they're going to fill up this pasture when there are six, and then they're going to be a steady but not too large supply of meat, uh, beef particularly, and more leather for making clothing. So I've just been occasionally having a tailor and blacksmith, not most of the time, whenever my supply of uh, tools and clothing gets low. I, I'm not too worried about the fact that I can't do the best, so there's steel tools, which require coal as well. Um, I haven't had any opportunity to get coal yet. It's not on the surface like iron and stone are. You can build a mine that will produce coal or iron for you, and you can build it, uh, you gotta stick it onto a mountainside here. It's sometimes a little bit hard. There's only so many places that they will fit properly. Well, this is kind of a pain here. Like, you think, oh man, I really wish I could get one right here. But I don't really recommend doing that in the early game. Uh, you know, it's kind of expensive to run, it's kind of dangerous in that sometimes your uh, citizens will die. This, that's especially true of the quarry for stone. I recommend just kind of spreading out a little bit more, uh, bridging where you need to, and gathering from the surface. And don't worry about getting the steel tools at first. Um, basically what you want to do is if you get the trader early instead, wait for a trader to come by that either has coal or steel tools, and trade for those. Then you'll get a small supply without having to build an entire mine. Um, but we can do mining later. Mining is one of the things that we have a uh, achievement lined up to get, so we're gonna need to do that, but uh, the achievement is kinda just do a whole ton of it, so I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait as long as I can to start that and then do a, a huge amount in, in a relatively short time. I, I think it's uh, it's I say relatively short, but it's actually pretty long. Yeah, it's going to be at least three years of solid production, producing 10,000 iron in up to 100 years. That's an awful lot of iron, so uh, I'm gonna, not going to work on starting that. I, I don't think the 100 years is going to start now. And I got my graveyard here. It's a good thing to do a, a you know small graveyard. Uh, keep people happy in case people are dying. Now, now is about the time, even though it's only late winter of year 11, people have aged up so much I've got, you know, a lot of 70 year olds, not so many anymore, but our 69, 71 year old people are some of my original uh, settlers, and you can see they're, they're living pretty much alone. All their children have moved out into their own homes, and they, uh, this is when your housing starts to become a little bit less efficient, because you're you're spending uh, more of your housing allotment on single individuals because their spouse has already died. Nobody else is going to move in with them. You just kind of have to wait for them to die and then some other family will move in. Uh, but now we're starting to get to the sort of steady state where you can, the kind of efficiency you can expect to get out of your housing uh, before we, we kind of were ultra efficient at the beginning because nobody was old. And the way you, you want to position your houses is uh, you, you definitely want to keep them fairly central. And you'll notice I, I left a spot here, and I'll tell you what that's for in a second. But you also want to sort of spread them a bit towards the places where you have jobs. So notice I've got, um, you know, some laboring going on over here. I can gather some stone. And generally, somebody who lives over here will be a laborer or a herdsman. So as I've, I've got my pasture. Since I added my pasture here, I added a couple of houses um, off in that direction. This just makes things, you know, slightly more efficient. But you want to keep things generally central for a few reasons. One is uh, everything that these people need, they're getting out of these storage barns. So they're going to need a relatively short walk to any of the storage barns that contain stuff that they're going to want. Uh, likewise, dealing with firewood, firewood's going to be in these stockpiles. So you don't want to start putting houses really far from the firewood stockpile. Uh, this is sort of our, our city center, and that's where you should be able to get everything. Now, I left this space open for a market. I measured it out exactly the right size. And the market is not important right now, so I don't need it, but I will need it. And I will need it to be centrally located in my housing district. And the reason is, the purpose of the market, does it say anything here? used to provide a localized area for citizens 
to collect food, tools, and fuel. So basically, your market will I- employ vendors, and the vendors they'll go to a storage barn and then bring it back to the market. And that way, you can start having storage barns that are not so close to your housing district, including new centers of production elsewhere. This is how you go from having one nucleus to multiple nuclei is with the market. So that way, if I have some other place somewhere else and they have chickens and sheep, then eggs and wool and chicken are only going to come from、uh, a vendor going out there, going to the storage barn there, bringing it back, putting it in the market, and then it's available for everybody. So, for instance, I, I、uh, have a tailor, I have a blacksmith here. Uh, I don't use them very much. They're not doing their job very often because I don't need that many yet.、Uh, so、maybe someday they'll be more or less full time. But when that happens, I will already have more town. Maybe I'll have a, another city center over here, and the production is going to put、uh, iron tools and clothing. Where's my clothing? Oh, there it is.、Uh, so the hide coats. Uh, are going to be in this storage barn still. So then everybody is going to get cold because they don't have coats, and they're going to have to walk all the way over here. Unless I also have a market in this new town area. That way, the vendors will basically equally distribute all the stuff. So the herbalist just gathers herbs, and people are able to go there for healing. You really don't need more than one at first. You you gather up probably more medicine you need. You might actually want to trade some of it away. Uh, you wouldn't want to do this everywhere. So if you had an herbalist here and you had another herbalist here, one of them would do no healing at all. It would just produce herbs, and they wouldn't really serve much purpose.、Um, so like the ratios of different buildings you need in general is going to depend on the population, and you're going to be really efficient、uh, if you are able to. Make that ratio work globally, so you you have the right number of tailors for your whole population, not for the local population. If you have to start somewhere else and people don't have clothing, or they have to walk really far to get clothing, until they are large enough of a population to support another tailor, then you're gonna you're gonna be wasting a lot of your citizens' time and potentially killing them. So. That's the key. Maybe I'll、uh, skip ahead a little bit and show you multiple city centers so you can see how that works.